This drawing is mainly a line drawing with some shading. And you can ask, well, is it the lines or the shading that are causing the 3D? And if the next slide shows if we decompose it into the same lines and the same shading, now it looks totally flat. So we've lost the 3D cues. So it turns out it, that they weren't the individual cues. It was, it, was the, it was the concatenation of the cues into the whole object. Next slide. The, that gives the 3D impression. I hope you kind of see this actually bulging out of the screen rather than being a flat object on the screen. So, so, so the man who, who really tried to decompose the 2D from the 3D cues was Bela Jules. He was at Bell Labs just across the way in, in New Jersey, and I had the honor of working with him one year back in the, the 70s. And he invented a thing called the random dot stereogram. The next slide. And this is a very difficult, uh, Marge Livingston showed you a, an easy one. I hope some of you saw it. This is a very difficult random dot stereogram. And it, oh, yeah, part of the spiral. purpose in showing you is spiral. so that you can see the process of your binocular system working on this and gradually pulling out how many people have seen what it is. So we've only got about uh, maybe half. So keep working on it. We should get up to about 90% if we, if we have enough time. So you see this spiral coming out towards you, projecting over the stage. So that all that binocular disparity information was in the image at the beginning, but your brain really had to battle to pull it out and to, to follow the surface through and to track it until you saw the spiral. So, so, so this, this is the, seeing this image is what really turned me on to stereopsis. So uh, this, this has far fewer dots. It's only got 1% of the dots. Hopefully you see that the, the image is a fairly simple stereo square. But what, what about the white spaces between the dots? There's no information there. They're just white spaces. And yet you see that they have a surface. In, in the center part is, is, is a surface connecting the dots. And the background part is a different surface connecting those dots. And so somewhere in our brain, we're developing this sense of a continuous surface, even though the local cues are only sparse dots. So this is a problem that, that I've been working on. How do we see the surface, the full surface structure from sparse cues? I want to try and show you what I've been thinking. Next slide. Which is that the, the surface reconstruction is, is, um, is achieved by a thing I call the attentional shroud. It's as though you have an object and you throw a, a, a net over it. Has another uh, famous example, I don't know if you've come across this, the, the lovers, and you understand the shapes of their heads from the, uh, the cloth that's covering. You don't understand the full detail. The point is, it's a reduced information, but it carries the information of the shape of the heads. Next slide. Which, so the, the, the theory here is that, that you can unwrap the 3D shape into a 2D surface. And this is achieved by a, a mathematical process called Riemannian uniformization. So that, th this work was, was done by a, a mathematician called David Gu, which uh, shows in principle how you can go from 3D to 2D. Next uh, slide. And that 2D can be either a flat surface or a spherical surface. It's still flat, though. In, I mean, it's locally still flat. So we still, by the uniformization, we still collapsed the 3D information into a 2D representation, which we can imagine, next slide, pr projecting on, onto the visual cortex, which is itself a flat surface. It's crinkled in 3D, but it's inherently flat. And so, next, and one, one part of the cortex could, could be imagined to contain the 3D information within its flat surface by um, distorting the representation according to this process that's called Riemannian 
uniformization. Now, the next slide um, shows how we can apply this theory to, to the reconstruction of sparse Q surfaces. So imagine that we have this a kitten figurine as, as a complete surface, and then we sample it. Next slide. In uh, sparse Q. So this is the dots corresponding to that stereogram with the, the sparse dots. So that's all the information we have. It doesn't itself have any surface information. Next. But the Riemannian uniformization uh, allows th those dots to be projected to this uh, 2D surface. Next slide. Which then can be projected back to, to interpolate the empty parts and give you a full view of the 3D object and the final slide, which then can be viewed from a different, it, it's a 3D re reconstruction, which then can be viewed from a different viewpoint, although, of course, the, there's a gap missing w where the tail was behind the head. that We can't deal with that. And uh, so this is a theory of how how to wrap the surface uh, defined by sparse cues uh, to give us a 3D understanding of the objects in the world that we look Are at. Are you saying that, you th that the brain is doing something like this? Yes. Uh, this is a theory of how it could be encoded in, in a part of the cortex without anybody looking at that piece of cortex. It would be self-encoded because this Riemannian uniform, uh, uniformization contains the information about the shape in itself. It doesn't have to be looked at. 